all right, we're going to go to Rita Cinema for our movie review, Soul. So another big box office movie that didn't quite make it to the big box office due to COVID uh, came out on Disney+. Plus. Uh, we didn't have to pay for it this time like Mulan, but uh, what'd you make of Soul, uh, the Pixar film, big release? Uh, how'd you grade it? Well, I'm not going to tell you my grade until I finish my review in terms of my ranking. But I will say here we got another winner from Pixar, certainly in terms of the animation and the overall in entertainment value. Um, in, in this particular, I think a lot of the movies that Pixar has released, you know, in the last 10 years, um, try to incorporate some type of life lesson or, you know, something like that for us to identify with. And I didn't think they really hit on anything very new here. They've just sort of repackaged some life, uh, some lessons about the meaning of life. And it certainly reminded me a little bit about, of, I, although I haven't watched them in a little while, of more recent Pixar films with Coco and Upward. Um, so I, I didn't think it was a whole lot new, but it's repackaged and the animation and the story are fun and interesting. A lot of death this year for Pixar with Upward and uh, yeah. uh, Soul. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure if they've got philosophy professors working for them these days or, or what, but let me give the, the story and forgive me if this seems a little convoluted. I, I tried to, and long, I tried to summarize it, but there are a lot of things going on in this movie and I haven't even covered any, all of them in my, in my plot summary here, but You've got the main character, Joe Gardner, who is voiced by um, Jamie Foxx. Uh, he's a middle school teacher from New York City, and he dreams of a career in jazz as a jazz pianist. And on the very same day that he finds out that he's been going to be offered a, he's been working part time as a music teacher. And the same day he finds out that he's, he has the opportunity to work full time permanently in this school. He also learns of an opening in a, a jazz band um, that's headed by this legendary Dorothea Williams. Uh, and her, her character is voiced by Angela Bassett. And so he goes and he auditions for it. And impressed by Joe's piano playing, Dorothea offers him a chance to perform later that night. Well, Joe is so happy. He skips off. He's running through traffic and uh, he's ready to prepare for the show. And what happens? But he falls down a manhole. And the next thing we know, we find Joe and his soul heading for the great beyond. Um, but he's furious. He's like, no, no, I can't die now. I've got to, you know, I've got this chance to be a piano player. So um, uh, he's unwilling to die before his big break. So he escapes um, the path to the great beyond. But instead, <laughs> in doing this, he ends up in a place called the great before, uh, where soul counselors, who are all named Jerry, uh, prepare unborn souls for life. Um, really, it, it's a, a very sweet story with with all these jerry's and and um joe is then each so in the little souls they're preparing for life to go to the earth so each soul has a little badge and once filled out with their traits it grants them pa passage to earth but the last little badge that the last little um uh, thing they have to get for their badge um, is their spark. They have to find their spark and they're mentored uh, uh, by great people or just average people, instructors, uh, to get to find their spark. And um, Joe, when he hits the great before, they mistake him as an instructor and assign him to mentor this little cynical soul called 22. And uh, 22 is a uh, voice by Tina Fey um, and uh, wonderful as always. Um, and she has been in the great before for millennia, for a very long time. She's had teachers like Beethoven and Mother Teresa and on and on and on, and none of them, she frustrated all of them and none of them could help her find her spark. So she needs to find her spark in order to complete her badge and um, she actually has no interest whatsoever. She's very cynical in living on earth. She doesn't want to earn her badge, but she says she'll do it because she can give her badge to Joe and then he could return home to earth. So Joe tries to help 22 find her passion, um, but the, all his attempts prove futile and um, 
they cannot seem to find her spark or anything. I mean, it's, you know, a disaster. And um, they find out that if they, there's this place called the zone and there is, uh, they, they, that is an area um, where uh, lost souls go that who have become sort of broken people. But also in the zone is Moonwind, uh, the captain of a psychedelic pirate ship that helps to rescue lost souls. So he finds Joe and 22, and they find him. The, and um, the his uh, Moonwind and his mystics agree to help Joe, who actually is back in back on Earth. He is in the hospital in a coma, and they agree to help Joe get back to Earth. Um, so Joe. Uh, excitedly uh, hops on uh, to, to this um, psychedelic ship and they get him back to earth. But he accidentally, in the process of doing that, brings 22 along. Who is, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't want to go to work. She, earth, she has no interest in it. But what happens in their trip back to earth is that 22 ends up in Joe's body and Joe ends up in the body of, uh, or the uh, a therapy cat, a name Mr. Mittens, I think is his name. Um, and um, 22 is, at first she's just terrified because she doesn't want to be there and she just wants to hide. Um, but then as she uh, settles into Joe's body, um, she starts finding all these wonderfully enjoyable things on earth and uh, just little things in life, uh, little, uh, and you'll find out at the end, she, you know, the, the little um, uh, things that fly off the maple tree, I can't remember, the little seeds that fly off, fly off the little wings that, you know, she catches one and, and she's enchanted by it and just little things like that. So uh, we've got 22 in Joe's body, Joe in Mr. Mitten's body, and in the meanwhile, Back in the great before, the an accountant that works for the great beyond has found that he's missing a soul. And of course, his soul is Joe. And he's counting his souls and um, he's find, he, he uh, knows he's missing one and he finds out it's Joe and he heads to earth to look for the missing Joe to bring him back. So Joe, in the meantime, <laughs> and I've told you that this goes a lot of different directions. Joe, in the meantime, uh, in the body of, uh, in the soul being, uh, inhabiting the Mr. Mittens, Joe is Mr. Mittens, has to find out how to get back to his own body so that he could make his concert with the jazz group. And what he finds out is that Moonwind also inhabits a body on Earth, and he has a day job as a sign twirler that I just thought that was hilarious. I loved it. Moonwind is the sign twirler. And it, apparently Moonwind can help Joe be restored to his body. Um, and uh, so he goes out seeking Moonwind to do this. However, at the same time, 22 has decided, she's had this epiphany. She's decided that maybe Earth isn't so bad and she wants to stay uh, in Joe, there with Joe's body. So she takes off with Joe chasing her and, um, you know, trying to get her so he can get her uh, to Moonwind and they can exchange their bodies, their, their souls again in their bodies, and, and she can go back to the great before. However, you still got Terry chasing all of them, and he catches up with them, and he actually brings both of them, uh, Joe and 22, back to the great before. So Joe hasn't had the chance to play his concert, 22 has changed her mind and she has found her spark and that's what they realize when they get back to the great before 22 realizes that her badge has been filled out and she can go back to earth but joe insists that the reason that she found this spark and realized it was because she experienced it through him through his body while she was on earth and it was through his experiences and his tastes in life that she 
got this. So then 22 gets angry and throws the badge at him and disappears into the zone of lost souls. So now Joe can get back to earth because he's got this badge. So he heads back to earth and he has this successful, wonderful performance with the Dor Dor Dorothea Quartet. Now I'm going to throw in here that I'm not going to go into detail, but before he has this performance, he has um, an exchange with his mother and there's a lot of issues there. Um, that, uh, of uh, him trying to live a lot of the life of his father too. So anyway, I, as I say, I'm not gonna, that's another path to go down the mother, father, Joe. His father is is no longer living, but um, anyway, that's another aspect to the story and Fel, uh, Felicia Rashad plays, uh, voices the, the mother in this story. Um, so he, but he does make it, oh, and part of it too is that his mother does come to realize that this is his dream and she gives him uh, this suit that belonged to his father, which he wears to his, his um, debut with Dorothea's quartet. So he does get to play with the quartet and, you know, he has a successful performance. However, after it's done, um, it's not as fulfilling as Joe thought it was going to be. And he sort of has this thought in his mind then, pointed out by Dorothea, that basically, it's going to be a routine night after night. And he then realizes that there have been a lot of other things, including mentoring 22, uh, that have really brought him joy in life. And it's not just about this passion he has from, for, for music. There are many things in his life that have brought him joy. And he starts to feel pretty bad about taking 22's badge. So, um, he, this is where he takes the little maple wing and he looks at it and he goes back to the, the um, great before. I've kind of forgotten how he gets back there though. I don't know if you remember that, but I, he gets into the trance uh, while playing the piano. At oh, his house. that's yeah. Okay. All right. And um, anyway, he goes back and 22 is now, she's a lost soul. She has gone to the zone of lost souls. But he, he uses this little maple seed that she kept and as inspiration and um, he finds her and he convinces her that she's ready to live her life on earth and um, returned uh, to you know normal and, and go back to earth. So with her badge, uh, Joe, let, he realizes what he's doing when he does this, though, is that he's giving up his chance to be on Earth, and it means that he will go to the great beyond. He will be dead, and he'll go to the great beyond, but he gives it up for 22 because he realizes how much it means to her and what he's done to help her, and so he, you know, he, he holds her hand and and stays with her as long as he can, and then 22 heads to heads to earth, and you know we know then she's going to be a living soul somewhere. That's uh, um, the very sweet part of the story. And um, he then has to prepare to go to the great beyond. He has come to the realization that his life is over, and he must go to the great beyond. But one of the Jerry's intervenes. Oh, we're so happy the Jerry intervenes, and thanks. Um, Joe, for being such an inspiration to them and, and to 22, and they offer him another chance at life. So Joe accepts that. I'm almost going to cry. It's so sweet in, in the movie. Joe accepts it and returns to earth, and he's ready now to live his life more fully and appreciate every single moment. That's basically the story. As long, I'm sorry, that was a very long plot summary. Yeah. All right. So that's the story of Soul. <laughs> I got a couple vibes off this film watching it. It reminded me a little bit of the uh, 80s Albert Brooks movie, uh, Defending Your Life with Mer Meryl Streep. I, I got a little mm. bit of, you know, as the flashbacks happened and, uh, you know, a sort of... Uh, unhappy, depressed person, uh, you know, ends up in uh, purgatory, you know, looking back right. at his life and how he goes about it. Right. Now, there's no Meryl Streep character. Everybody's sort of uh, unhappy with their lot in life uh, with between him and 22. But I, I got a little bit of that vibe, which uh, if anyone hasn't seen that movie, uh, go watch it. It's a pretty funny movie. Um, my favorite part of the film was definitely when uh, Mr. Mittens and uh, 
22 were in the reverse bodies going about earth. I, I just yeah, love those it scenes. It was really cute. They were hilarious. Uh, yeah. The barbershop uh, scene oh, was- Oh, that was wonderful. Just yes, great. Yeah. And then uh, when the little shadowy guy takes the wrong guy's soul and lets oh, him yes. stare at death yeah, and then he's yeah. looking all weird yeah. uh, afterwards. There I, are lots of parts of this movie that are just really, it's a very upbeat movie. There's nothing, even though it sounds kind of sad yes. and it- it's a lovely, lovely, upbeat movie. Well, uh, Pixar continues its, continues its theme of being able to pull off, uh, sort of have the, uh, you know, funny ha-ha kids sort of hijinks in there. But uh, right. really, uh, storyline-wise, it probably appeals more to adults. Yeah. Because children would not pick up on really any of these right. themes other than, you know. Unless their parents tell yes. them and explain it. Yes, yeah. other than, you know, 22 shenanigans and, yeah. you know, all that. But uh, really. That, that's one of the points I was going to make in, in, in some of my observations on the, the film. I, yeah. I think that's true. So the other thing I was curious about, uh, it might be a little... Uh, Christopher Nolan timeline thing, but I thought Connie, uh, the trombone uh, player who was really good. Oh yes, might uh -huh. actually have been 22. Oh, in a my. body, because you remember when uh, yeah. she goes to the apartment, <gasps> yeah, and then you know 22 bonds with her. Yes, as, it just uh, made me think maybe they're the same person. Now that might be, you know, a reading too much into it. I think you are reading too much into it, but, but it's, it's a nice thought. Uh, yeah, I know. It's a fun little plot line. <laughs> I love that thought. It, I didn't, it didn't come to it me. It had the same, she had the same sort of attitude and, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, hated everything, but then, you know, she loved everything. But you see, 22 in the body of Joe kind of saves Connie. Yes. But see, that's helps. also what made me think that maybe because oh, she was her, she can yeah. save her because she knows how to get to her. But uh, you know, that's uh, but probably I, like yeah, I think six Joe, levels too deep of reading into the story. Like. Right, My, mm -hmm. it it might be, <laughs> but I think Joe, you know, understands what uh, twenty two has done for Connie too, and and um, you know, I think he sees then what impact he has, you know, yes. based on what twenty two did through his yeah, definitely th through his body. So I have a few observations. I, you know, we've already touched on a couple. One is that I, I must admit, I, you know, just as it took me a long time to tell the story, and I left out a whole lot of, <laughs> of a, uh, aspects of the theme, it's a bit existential. And I, I think it may take on too many philosophical life lessons um, for us to move around in our heads. Uh, about finding your passion in life and being happy with it and about family relationships, about life and death and, and what is important to value in life. Um, it, that doesn't take away from the entertainment value of the movie, but I do think maybe they stacked it on a little. Well, I was going to ask you this question. Um, <laughs> yeah. Are you thinking Pixar might be going too deep with some of these uh, things? This one sandwiched with Onward that came out yeah. earlier in the year are both really sort of I don't want to say dark, but they're... Yeah. Is somebody at Pixar really depressed right now about their but, life? You know, I say that, and then, you know, they released Toy Story 4 last yes, year. They yeah. released, uh, you know, uh, The Incredibles, too. Right. So they have their, you know, fun yeah, ones. Yeah, fun in there. movies, too. But, yeah. uh, Although there are lessons in, in those stories, yeah. too. It's just not as But you start to mix dark, this one maybe, with, uh, yeah. you know, uh, Inside Out, which came out, you yes. know, four years ago that dealt with depression and all this. So, and Coco. And uh, Coco. Yeah. So I just curious, maybe yeah. they've gotten a little too uh, well. I, I'd say a yeah adult thematic. Uh, well, I think they figure adults are always going to take their kids to movies too. But this gets the adults and the kids. I I don't know. I do think um, that was one of the points I was going to make too. That I I really think this is a, a movie that adults will take to and enjoy. Um, but I don't really know at what point, at what age, I don't have enough in, uh, contact with young children anymore. I don't know at what point kids will really get into it. I think, you know, younger kids might enjoy Mr. Mittens, the yes. cat, you know, that's kind of cute. And some of the animated figures. Um, but I think you're going to have to be nine, 10 years old, really not be bored by this. Don't you think young kids will get bored? Well, I, so yeah, I think this is an adult movie. And so I think 
I upward think and cocoa. It doesn't even too. have the like cocoa where it had yeah. all the bright colors and yes. the you know right. Latin music. Where yes. this one has a more jazz. It, yes. I, I don't want the music was great in yeah, this. Yeah, music but was very good. It is a jazz music, and yeah, I, I'm not that sure that doesn't appeal to kids for the most part. To music, either. as yeah. you have the Latin mm-hmm. music that has you know fun beats and dancing yeah. and all this. So it's it's a totally different theme, but uh, I did enjoy it, and I did enjoy the animation on it. I I just wondered if Pixar maybe pushing it too far adult wise and uh but then they'll throw no, you but know then what? they'll throw in a toy story so you know yeah. it's a and, good balance and i think you can take it for whatever you want this is this was my comment that i i took some notes on and i, I think that um it's kind of best just to sit back and enjoy the movie and not make a college philo- philosophy assignment out of it. Um, it. It sort of it reminded me back in my college English classes where I'd read a great piece of literature, which I would enjoy, and then we'd have to discuss it to death to find the underlying meaning and what the author was uh, going for. And I and I understand that. That's what studying literature all all about, and that's how you develop critical thinking skills and that sort of thing. But I kind of hated it because it took away from my enjoyment of the literature, piece of literature itself. And so I think even with this movie, you know, dishing out a lot of underlying messages, uh, I think you can still enjoy it for the entertainment value and the art that it is. And that's my next point. This movie is a treat to watch um, because the animation it, it is mesmerizing. I was amazed at how stunning it was to watch. I mean, that really drew yes. me in. It was just stunning. And it, it's just a very entertaining, feel-good movie, along with this great art in terms of yeah, designing definitely. that animation. It, it looked uh, ridiculously uh, amazing. It was actually probably one of the better ones I'd seen in a while. Uh, Coco was on there, but yeah. uh, I actually thought this uh, looked better than even Coco. It, it now, did. Coco had the bright colors, but- Coco uh, had the bright colors this thing and was, was very stimulating. Just, uh, yeah. just a masterpiece in yep. uh, you know, uh, computer animation. Well, and, and you know, I didn't find it too heavy, back to your question, because I decided just to enjoy it for what it presented in terms of the story. But visualize the visual, the the music, the script, the actors. It all came together very nicely, and you found yourself really enjoying yeah. it. And you don't have to make it. It has a heavy theme to it, but well, you don't have to make. I it think that. some of it too is, um, you know, these Pixar first came out uh, with Toy Story in like ninety five, ninety six, uh-huh. and you know, any uh, child born in the 80s or 90s essentially grew up with Pixar and will always want to watch Pixar film like myself, but uh, now we're old and adults. So I I think they sort of have to continue with this, uh, you know, mixing of, uh, you know, adult themes with, uh, you know, fun little child characters to keep both parties interested, you know, this, you know, they aren't trolls uh, 3D or anything. Yeah. No, I, I, it's hard for me to believe they can go anywhere with more with that animation. That was just uh, really pretty spectacular. Um, and I also want to thank the people who made this movie for keeping it under two hours. Well, yeah, that was the thank other thing you. I was going to say. It, it felt uh, fun, and I don't want to say quick, but it, it felt brisk. You, you know? didn't get bogged down It was down story, in it. it hit its theme points, yeah. and then it, you know, it didn't have filler, you know, scenes in there like uh, a lot of movies do now just to well I, I i thought you know we've reviewed make a pe- lot of make people think they're getting more bang for their buck which is i it just become the theme now you have to yeah. make the movie two and a half hours because people yeah. will feel cheated and right i'm like well i don't feel cheated i feel <laughs> bored when they're too long and we've reviewed a lot of movies this year that have been too long including wonder woman which i did enjoy but it was too long and you do feel like there's a lot of filler in there. I didn't get bogged down in this one. It had a nice pace. It was fun to watch, and it wasn't too long. So I really do thank them. And, um, you know, a lot of people have have commented that this is the best movie they've seen this year. I don't necessarily think that, but I certainly 
Um, it, it does bring an um, upbeat message. Uh, this year as in 2021? Or? Um, no, <laughs> as in 2020, 2021, I guess. This movie actually came out in 2020, even though we're reviewing it in 2021. But, you know, we've, look, we've watched, a, we've reviewed a number of movies yes. that, you know, I, I think um, this one was certainly entertaining and upbeat. And, and uh, I could see how people would think it's the best movie they've seen this this past year. I don't year. know if it's that. Uh, well, it's not in my book, I'm but not, it is good. <laughs> I really enjoyed it, but I don't even know if I, I liked it more than Upward. I might have liked, it's probably about the same level. It's certainly not my favorite uh, Pixar no. film. It, it doesn't even crack uh, like Ratatouille or Wally or right. Finding Nemo for me. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I was- I forgot Finding Nemo. Yes, I, I love know. that. <laughs> Toy Story <laughs> Finding Nemo are probably So it doesn't crack- uh, <laughs> that list but no. it definitely cracks up uh, you know really entertaining <laughs> really fun to watch right. and and really just an easy watch i think if you want a fun easy saturday and you don't have to take uh you know two and a half hours out of your day uh this is a good one to pick all right so we're gonna go to ratings yes how did you rate it well i agree with you i don't really think this is going to be a pixar classic but it did deliver positive messages and the animation was outstanding. It was beautiful. So um, I was entertained. I was greatly entertained. Uh, I gave it a seven, um, which is kind of my average score <laughs> for movies this year. So I don't want to, I didn't want to give it a five or below because I think it's better than that. So I settled on a seven. I went with a seven as well about the, uh, same as I put Wonder Woman and uh, Tenet in. It's probably on about that same level uh, for me. Really entertaining. So uh, go out and watch Soul if you have not. Yes, definitely. All right. So our next movie coming up is Ma Rainey and the Black Bottom. We're going back to the uh, Netflix film. Uh, no more big box office for probably a couple movies here. But uh, Ma Rainey and the Black Bottom. Next, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Next on our list, be sure to tune in for that. Uh, you can find all our podcasts on greenlightnetwork.org. You can find our show on YouTube, on Facebook. Be sure to like and follow us both on that. You can find me at GLNChamp5 on Instagram and Twitter. That's our show, and we're out.